Uh, welcome back. Uh, we are going to continue now the complex. We are going to look to some uh, programming idioms or styles in complex to build, connect components together. The first paradigm is a published scribe paradigm where we have our network component and we have a component with two handlers. One handler handles the mm, events of type message A and the other handler handles events of type message B. And uh, both are subtypes of the message uh, type. So now if an event comes from the network component, depending on the type of this event, it will either be handled by message A or handled by message B. If it is of type message A, it will be handled by this handler. If it is of type message B, it will be handled by this handler. So here is a message A. And here is a, a message B. Multiple components can, can subscribe to the same port. In this case, we have two channels. Channel channel 1 and channel 2. Any message coming out of this port will be observed by both components or be observed here and they will be filtered so that messages that belong to this type which is message A will be handled here and messages belonging to this type will be handled here. So if we look again and see what happens, so message of type A goes there, it does not go here, and a message of type B goes there. This is a different situation. In this situation, we have two components, both of them are handling uh, event types message A. So if an event comes from the network component, it will be actually broadcast to both components. The same thing will happen here. You can subscribe multiple handlers to the same event type. And if an, if an event comes here, it will be handled by both handlers. But there is a particular difference between this and the example that we saw before, this example. Do you remember this example? So, in this example, these two handlers can run concurrently, whereas in this case, the message coming and handle the message, the message uh, replicated into two, these t two handlers will be executed sequentially because a component has one single thread of control, it executes one handle at a time. All right. Here is an interesting scenario when you want to send remote messages. We'll see what is going to happen in this scenario first. So basically, so let us see how we uh, transfer events between multiple processes. So we have two sides here, or two nodes. One is main one and one is m main two. And let us look what the application is doing. The application, this handler, subscribes to a ping message. So it means subscribe whenever the network provides a ping event, it will be triggered. And this handler subscribe to a Pong event or a message. Okay, we use the event again. All right. So, so the question is how to communicate between these two nodes. For example, assume that th this handler want to send a Pong event to be activated here. So how this 
can happen. So the way to do it is quite, uh, there is a specific discipline to do that. So when you send a request here to send a Pong event to the other node, you send it to the network, the network encapsulates as a component in the message to be sent, it encapsulates the, the event Pong. The event Pong then goes through the network and when it comes here, it will come here as a Pong event. And when it comes as a Pong event here, the it Pong handler that subscribes to the Pong message will handle it. So let us see what is going to happen. Here's a, this is capturing a, a message, a ping message. The may ping message is sent to the other side and then goes to the ping handler. The ping handler encapsulates a Pong, a Pong event. This Pong event is encapsulated in a message and goes to the other side, taken out and then handled by the Pong handler. So this is the way to communicate um, between different nodes. You encapsulate the events that you want to, to run on the remote node in a message, a network message, I would say. And this message will be serialized and sent across the network and extracted in the other side or other node. And then events handlers that subscribe to this type of message will get that message. That's basically it. Okay, so now let us look to how you schedule time out in Compass, which is a very common um, thing that you are going to do through this course. So you have the timer component. The timer component, you, the client should be able to schedule a timeout and cancel a timeout. And the idea is very similar to what we described before in the following sense. If you want to schedule a timeout, you encapsulate the timeout event as argument of schedule timeout. So, so this will go here. We go to schedule timeout. This event is extracted here and sent up again after the timeout or the time duration has passed. This is the basic idea. So here is my timer. You can select it in a timeout, um, schedule timeout. After a while, this timeout event goes there and it is handled by my timeout. This is the basic way. The same thing happens with cancel timeout. That's happened there. And you decide to cancel, so you cancel. So the cancel timeout um, event carries with it an identification of my timeout that was sent before. Let us look to this in code. Here we have a situation we are create we are making a component called my component. It requires the timeout component. And here is our start handler. And it does two things. It will schedule timeout and later it will cancel the timeout. So here we define the delay. And there we create a timeout event with that delay. So it is schedule timeout with that delay. You create a timeout event with that delay. This is a schedule timeout event. The schedule timeout event can inside it store, you can store a timeout event. And that's what you do here. You say so you have a, it has a setter that sets the timeout event. And from that timeout event, you can get a timeout ID for that event. That's the ID. And then you send this schedule timeout event to the timer. That's what you do here. Now, if you happen that you would like to um, cancel the timeout 
event then you basically create a cancel timeout event with encapsulated within it the timeout events identifier and you trigger that time uh, cancel timeout events by sending it to the timer so if we look from a software engineering view what do we have we have components or modules with interfaces. These they provide service abstraction. And these are provided through the notion of ports and events. Events and ports. And ports describe a set of events, input and output events. So and this will you can call it um, define modules, package it in libraries and so on. So this is define the service. And then you have components which are in fact implementation of that service. So in a sense you can have multiple components that implement the same service that is provided by by ports and events. So this is so you will the implementation they provide a certain service or require certain interfaces or services uh, they clearly express the dependency what are the required services are needed and what are the provided services this would be library dependency it could be multiple implementation and these are composed together at deployment time in fact they can even be reconfigured during runtime but we will not cover this in in this lecture so Compex is a software that is open source. Here is the latest release currently, and you can find everything in, in that website. And you can get the source code at GitHub. Th many of the components that um, are used or are used there are already packaged as jars. You can use Maven that resolves dependencies down them automatically and look to the start uh, documentation. Okay, thank you.